you didn't hear it. <laughs> Hopefully I retain it. <laughs> so, but um, it's three hours and so many minutes long to, to listen to Matthew and John, so be prepared. So anyhow, uh, the thing that might makes this the most dastardly kiss, to, kiss in history is the motive and the attitude behind it. And um, this talks about it was the kiss of betrayal, an attempt on the part of Judah, Judas to get even with Jesus. I never, I never thought of it in that context of, Jesus, of Judas getting even with Jesus. It reveals the depth to which a person will go in forsaking a friend and, and obtaining revenge. So I, I, you know, I didn't think, I've never thought of it in that context. I thought of it in the context that Judas was just, you know, he was just wanted money. And he was going to do whatever he could to, to, to get money. But in, in this commentary, it talks about how that it was, it was, Judas was betraying Jesus to get even with him for, for something or other, but I don't know what it was. Uh, verse 46, and they laid their hands on him and took him. So when uh, Judas arrived with this ragtag militia, <laughs> um, but notice that who's, who's not there who's not there is the chief priests. Well, the chief priests, they sent these people out, but they, were, they didn't accompany them because they didn't want to be part of this in case it all fell apart. <laughs> so they didn't want to be there. And so they sent these, these guys out with all these weapons, but they knew the power of Jesus that, you know, if he can raise the dead and he can heal people, um, he, you know, he might be able to just blow them off the planet if he so desired. And so they weren't going to be part of that. So they send the, the, these uh, soldiers out with Judas. And Jesus answered them, verse 40, uh, 48, Jesus answered and said unto them, Are you come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? It's like, what are you doing? Uh, when have I ever, you know, put up resistance that you would need swords and staves and, you know, all these multitude of people to come after me. And so um, Judas, of course, um, he, and I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not, but that the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. So there's verse 50. So what happens is Judas betrays him, the uh, disciples... Um, They run away, you know, they're frightened, you know, because, number one, Jesus isn't fighting. And, you know, Peter, whenever he said that he would, when he said that he would rather die than deny Christ, well, he tried his own efforts, you know. He tried his own, his own, his own way of making this, his, his statement true. You know, he took out his sword and he's going to fight to the death. You know, he's going, they're going to run him through and kill him and he will have died a martyr. Well, Jesus says you can't do that. You can't take out your sword. And you can't fight that way. So that totally took Peter off guard. And so what does he do? He runs away and we find him denying Jesus in, in, a, in, a, shoe, in, a, in a few verses. Um, do you think, and then uh, this is verses 53 and 54, it says, do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? This is the way it has to happen. <laughs> Did you ever think, you know, today um, my, my message is on uh, when did it all begin, you know, uh, basically on creation and stuff. And the the understanding is when did this you know when was all this set in place well it was all set in place before there was creation <laughs> so jesus is basically saying in these verses that i could have called 12 legions of angels to come down here and just wipe you all out but i chose not to because the scriptures have to be fulfilled what was written about me and my death and my coming as the Messiah and as the sacrificial lamb of God to take away the sin of the world, it has to be this way. So there's a challenge. What if the situations that come into our life have to be this way? <laughs> it 
it's all planned out. You know? I was going to read this. It says only three years. It's, this is a, a kind of like a commentary on this. It says, A surprising feature of the ministry of Jesus is its length. Buddha taught for almost 50 years, Mohammed for more than 20 years, and Moses led Israel for 40 years. Jesus, however, ended his mission after three years. According to the New Testament scholar Marcus Borg, Jesus' ministry was brief, a light flashing momentarily but brilliantly like a meteor in the night sky. Instead, the focus of Jesus' life and ministry was his death and resurrection, which accomplished what his teaching ministry could not, the salvation of the world. <laughs> about that, you know, it's not about the teaching, you know, the teaching of Jesus. It's about his death and resurrection and his teaching. Uh, Mark 14, verse 53. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, with, with, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. Verse 55. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witnesses against Jesus to put him to death, and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. Basically, they sought for all these, um, you know, they, they, they came. One of the things here, it says that John's account includes a band of officers in the multitude. It is probably that they served like a police duty at the instruction of the officers of the chief priests. Um, in accordance with Anna, 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 Annas. The, and Jesus was sent bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. So, again, they have this all, all figured out and all set in place. And the, the problem comes, um, they couldn't find two people to agree. You know, in the Jewish law, two or three people must agree. Well, they couldn't get two or, people, two or three people to lie the same way. <laughs> You know, so uh, they were trying to get them to, you know, to at least agree on, on something. And um, so in this case, they had made up their minds to put Jesus to death. In order to make the case look real, they had to trump up witnesses. And their presumption was that he should die. And their um, procedure was to invent the facts necessary for conviction. So we got to put him to death. We just got to figure out a good reason that we can, that we can do that with. And um, the, the, one of the main things that they came up with was the testimony that says, they claimed that Jesus said, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands and within three days we'll build another made without hands. What Jesus had actually said was, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. It's something how people misquote <laughs> the word and find uh, difficulty with it. Um, so the, the, the false witnesses could not agree. So verse 60, the high priest stood in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answers thou nothing? Now, what's going on here is they're bringing all these accusations and what's Jesus doing? Nothing. He's just letting them babble on. Well, we know that when people are presenting a, 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 an, a case against someone, they've got to prove their case. Well, they're not capable of proving their case, so they're trying to get Jesus to say something about all these things that these people are accusing him of, and he won't say anything. You know, So they can't get him to collaborate with the witnesses, and they can't get him to verify or deny what all these people are saying and so they're all frustrated and answerest thou nothing which is it which of these witnesses against thee which is it which these witnesses against thee which one of these guys is saying the truth <laughs> okay okay let me see now okay you guys want to kill me and put me to death for some you know some trumped up charge and you bring all these charges and you want me to agree with one of these guys so that you have a basis for your charge but jesus was waiting he held his peace and he answered nothing 
And again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Now this is why Jesus is crucified. Not because he was going to destroy the temple, uh, his earthly temple, and build it up again. Art thou the Christ, the Son of the blessed? See, art thou the Christ, the Son of the living God? Okay? This is what the priests and so the priests were trying to find out what they were, you know, this would be a basis for killing him. But they, they, they knew this, but they were trying to find somebody to say it, and they couldn't get him to say it, and they couldn't even pay people to say it correctly. And so the high priest says that, and Jesus said unto them, And ye shall see the Son of Man setting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So now we have the basis for his crucifixion. He is claiming to be the Son of God. Now, now they've got something to kill him for. But Jesus is dying for the truth. He's not dying because of some lie. They have all these trumped up charges trying to get him to be killed and crucified for some garbage, some lie that they're telling. But he, he's not going to fall for that. If they're going to kill him, they're going to, they're going to take his life based on the truth that he says that he is the Son of God. I am the Christ, the Son of the blessed. So Jesus identified himself and his deity. So here's another one of those um, statements, you know, condensed statements. It says, you, and this is kind of like um, uh, um, a, it's not a commentary, it's a, uh, oh, what is it? It's, it's kind of, it's like Jesus, if he were talking, you know, to, to, to the situation right now, he might say, you, O Caiaphas, and you, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews, are now unjustly condemning me as a false prophet and a false Christ. Jesus was saying, but the day is at hand when I, who am now a prisoner at your judgment seat, shall sit on the throne of glory as the judge of you and of all mankind. You are now about to condemn me to death of the cross, but I shall then sit in judgment upon you and condemn you for the terrible guilt of slaying me, who am the true God and the judge of the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of putting them in their place. You guys are going to condemn me to death, but I, be careful because one day you're going you're gonna to be before me. Well, of course, they didn't, didn't like that. High priest, verse 63, rent his clothes. <laughs> he rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witness? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. So they were all, <laughs> they were all agreement, in agreement before Jesus ever showed up. Uh, but now they were able to pin something worthy of death in the, in the uh, you know, that he would claim to be God. Called Jesus a blasphemer. <laughs> uh, you know, wonder, whenever these guys stand before God in eternity, you know, passing into eternity, uh, what they're going to say when they have to kneel before Jesus and uh, the one they call blasphemer is God himself. Huh. Mark 15, verse 1. And straightway in the morning the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered, saying unto them, Thou sayest it. <laughs> so both Matthew and Mark indicate there were two meetings, the whole council and uh, the name given to the, the greater Sanhedrin. The first meeting was held before daybreak, and the latter meeting was composed of the Sanhedrin as well as the chief priests, the elders of the people, and the scribes. The larger group hastily assembled to let the rest of the Jewish leaders know the trial and to decide whether they would defy the Roman edict not to kill. So what's going on is they had come to the conclusion, the first group, sentenced him, found him guilty, you know, of blasphemy. And so then the second group with, you know, all the, the big wigs, <laughs> all the courts, the, uh, the 
the high court, the Sanhedrin, the, the elders and chief priests, and all the ones who were anything in the nation of Israel were gathered there. And they were deciding, are we going to try and get Pilate to crucify Jesus, or do we just want to go out and do it on our own? Well, the Romans had said, you don't have authority to do this. So they took Jesus to Pilate. Now, the consensus is, if, if Pilate had said, he's, you know, I don't see him worthy of death, you know, take him away, they'd probably, they were voting then to, well, we'll crucify him anyhow, you know, because he's just got to die. He, he's not one of us. <laughs> so... So the Jews found Jesus guilty of a religious crime worthy of, the de worthy of death. According to Luke, Jesus was accused of perverting the nation, forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ a king. So those are the things that finally came as the um, sentence that was uh, carried out to Jesus. So when the... When Pilate has Jesus before him, he recognizes that um, Jesus isn't, he knows that these guys have brought him there because of jealousy or uh, some type of uh, technicality in their religious form. And so Pilate is basically trying to get him off. But the, the crowd that the, the, these group the, the elders, the, the Sanhedrin, the chief priests, the elders of the people, and the scribes, there's a large, that's a, that's a goodly number of individuals. And so they're all there into this courtroom before Pilate, the courtyard, excuse me, before Pilate, and they are, you know, they want Jesus put to death. So they've got their groups together, and they are <laughs> vehemently uh, crying out for Jesus to be crucified. And so Pilate, not wanting, you know, recognizing that Jesus was different than the rest of them. And uh, so there was a tradition that the Romans had, been, had, the Romans had started was at this Passover, they, they would release a political prisoner, you know, as a gesture. So there was one individual who was there, was uh, like a Jesus Barabbas or uh, something, you know, and so... Um, so Pilate presents to them, you know, this option of, of which, which individual do you want? Now, Barabbas is a, a known, he, he's, in, he's arrested and sentenced to death because he was an instigator and he had, killed, he had killed a Roman soldier. So he's the one that's legitimately the, the one who should die. Verse 7, and they were, there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. So, meaning Pilate, they were wanting the, the man freed. All right? But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Don't you want me to release this one who's considered the king of the Jews? <laughs> so, um, when you look at Barabbas, He's kind of the epitome of a, a rebel and a, uh, what can I say, a instigator of uh, riots and, you know, things like that. And he's killed Roman soldiers. And then you have Jesus, who is the epitome of goodness and mercy and understanding. And you have him and all the good that he has done, the thousands that he had uh, taken care of and healed. And, you know, in the fray of the mob, uh, these people had, if they had heard what Jesus had said in the past, they certainly had forgotten it now. And so they cried out for uh, Barabbas to be released. And Pilate answered and said, unto, uh, said again unto them, What will you have them that I should do unto him you call king of the Jews? So he's like, you know, these priests down here and these scribes and Pharisees, they want me to kill him. But what do you people want? Well, the, the group was, you know, <laughs> totally biased and prejudiced and set against Christ. And uh, what should we have me do? And they cried out again, crucify him. So there they are in this almost maddening mob 
uh, that, the, you know, Pilate has to agree with them because Pilate, um, he says, the thing that made him yield was, pro no, this is the commentator, the thing that made him yield was perhaps the threat to his political life. According to John, um, the Jews cried out saying, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. So Pilate had to be uh, afraid for his own political future because if he would let Jesus go, these individuals not only cause a riot and an uproar, but they would take this to Caesar and, you know, Caesar would remove Pilate from his position and, you know, he might put him somewhere, you know, in the, um, I don't know, the Alaskan pipeline or something. <laughs> Siberia, that's what I was thinking of. They might ship him to Siberia. That's not Alaska, but that's, you know, anyhow. So to gratify the crowd, um, Pilate wanted only to make them satisfied. And so, what wilt thou even that I do? And they cried out even the more, crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. So, he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. So, what happened to Jesus was, you know, the mockery of a trial. But it was the purpose for which he came. And he who is the epitome of what is righteous and who is righteous and good well, is taken by the mob who is the epitome of self-interest and um, wanting only to do what they consider to be right and they have, uh, they have seemingly won in getting seen to the fact that Jesus is crucified. But little do they know this is exactly what must happen. So, any thoughts? Next week, his death and resurrection. So, and it's not even Easter. <laughs> Just can't let it go, right? But uh, so, any 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 thoughts on you know the trial and you know, those types of things? It's it's just a travesty, you know. Yeah. His wife, and to add to, the, add to the thing, his wife sends him a message, don't have anything to do with this guy. He, he's innocent. <laughs> but when does a leader ever listen to his wife? I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> so. Oh, my, yes, back then, yeah. Yeah, we have women. Women have rights today. Back then, they didn't have rights. Huh? But no, the idea is that um, even um, what Pilate is... Um, he, he, you know, he's really torn. He doesn't want to crucify Jesus, but for his own political standing and, you know, bearing, you know, not wanting a, a mob scene, he, he, he uh, acquiesces to them and has Jesus scourged. And I think that um, in, in the movie, um, what is it, uh, The Passion, they have the, uh, the people who are scourging Jesus. It's like the Romans, they, they don't want to be in Jerusalem. They, they hate, as it were, being, that's an outpost that <laughs> you don't, you don't want to go to as a Roman soldier. You don't want to go to this hot, arid, forsaken place in which the people are unruly and you never know what's going to happen and they will not acquiesce to your authority. And so when they get somebody in there that they can beat on, you know, their anger and their frustration uh, really comes out. And uh, so uh, in, the, in the movie, The Passion, um, the guy, the, the, the general or the uh, head of the legion shows up and he, he says, what are you doing? You know, you're, you're going to beat the guy to death. And that's basically what, what happened with, with Jesus. They were scourging him and they just got I said, carried away with it 
and um, beat him. And uh, that uh, and one translation says that he basically he was not, you couldn't recognize him for who he was. So he was beaten that severely. Yeah. So they beat him within a, an ounce of his life <laughs> and then uh, carried the cross and then nailed him to it. And so it's a, and, and he did all of that because he loved us and he, and he had that set in motion before he ever created us. So. He willingly submitted to the will of the Father because this had to be in order for us to be saved. <laughs> yep. He opened not his mouth. So as a lamb to the slaughter, he, he, didn't, he, he didn't say a thing, not only in Pilate's uh, judgment hall, but I'm sure as they're beating him, they were they were wanting him to say or do something that he wouldn't do. <laughs> and uh, so they just kept, they just kept beating him. So it's a, um, it's a terrible thing, but it was the only thing that could save us from our sin. Father, we thank you that you love us this much that Jesus has come to be our Savior, our sacrifice, our Redeemer. So, Lord, we thank you that as these scriptures, that these scriptures may come alive in our hearts and minds for the intent that you went through them. So we ask, God, you to bless your word to us and help us, O oh Lord, to see, understand, and Lord, let the spirit that gives you strength give us strength in each of our situations that we face. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.